The deadlift is a fantastic exercise for building both full body strength and size. Because of this, a lot more people are starting to incorporate the deadlift into their training routines. And a lot of people are making the same deadlift mistakes. One of the mistakes that I see all the time is people not knowing how high or how low to set their hips when they're setting up for the deadlift. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna walk you through how to find the perfect hip height for your leverages, regardless of whether you're pulling sumo or conventional. Now, before we get into the meat of things, I wanna talk about an idea that's gonna help you understand hip height in a different way. Now, I think hip height in itself is misleading because what we're actually trying to find is hip tension. If you're thinking about and looking for hip height, then we're thinking about something that's visual, something where we're thinking about how it would look if you were watching it back on film. And that takes you out of the lift. Whereas I think if we're looking for hip tension, which is what I'm proposing here, then we're going to be thinking inwards, we're going to be thinking about a feeling, and we're gonna be able to more consistently get there and perform the deadlift the same way each time. We're gonna run through the two-step process that I use when coaching to help people solve this problem. Step number one is to find posterior tension and to find your back position. Now, posterior tension is just kind of a fancy way of saying you're gonna find some stretch and some sensation of tension in your hips and your hamstrings. For a conventional deadlift, this is gonna look maybe a little bit like you're just stretching to touch your toes. You're gonna to stick your butt up behind you, you're gonna find some stretch in your hips and hamstrings, and for a sumo lifter, you're probably gonna be thinking more about reaching your butt back or reaching your hips back behind you, imagining, okay, there's a wall behind me, I'm gonna reach back for it. We're gonna have a fair bit of weight on the heels regardless of the stance. And this is also a really good time to set your back position. It's generally a lot easier to find nice neutral back angle with your legs straight up behind you before you pull down into position, which is gonna lead us into the next step. Now this takes us to step number two. This one can be a little bit tricky, but what we need to do is try to maintain that hip and hamstring tension and try to pull yourself into position. Now, the trick to maintaining the tension and to creating this new tension is to start pushing the floor away, imagining like you're using a leg press as you bring your hips down. Now, I don't want you to just sit down. I want you to actively lever yourself in against the bar, maintaining, like I said, that tension as well as that back position that we created until you find the ideal mix of hip and hamstring tension versus quad tension. Now for a conventional lifter, this is probably gonna be a little more hips high. This is probably gonna be a little bit more like a stiff-legged deadlift as compared to a sumo deadlifter where we're probably gonna see the hips come down a bit further before finding that right position of tension. And we're also probably gonna see a little bit more forward knee travel. This is also likely going to mean a good amount of pressure between the heel of your feet and the toes of your feet. We're gonna be relatively well balanced by the time we find this right tension. When you're in this tension position, it's gonna feel like the bar almost wants to float off the floor, especially with lighter weights, and that's where you're gonna deadlift from. Now, bear in mind that this position is gonna be highly individual, and it's also likely going to exist within a range of good positions. So you might be able to get your hips a little higher or a little lower with varied results, but good training and good coaching is trial and error. So play around a little bit, but pay attention to the outcome of the changes that you make while trying to get a little bit more consistent and refine this process of finding your tension in your setup. Well, I hope that gives you a couple of quick and relatively easy steps to follow to find a lot more tension and consistency with your deadlifts. And if you like this video, make sure to check out the playlists on our channel for more tips on your squat, bench press, and deadlift. That's it for me today. Bryce here at Calgary Barbell, and we'll see you next time.